right guys, here it is. SIG's newest entry into the micro compact market. The gun you've all been waiting for. The SIG P365. This gun comes in MSRP of $600, holds 10 rounds in the magazine of nine millimeter, comes with night sights, and this one here has a six pound trigger pull. Very, very sweet and extremely competitive. How does this gun compare to other guns in the same size or with the same capacity? First off here, we're comparing it to the Glock 42, which is a 380 from Glock, holds six rounds in the magazine. They're basically the same size as you can tell. From there, we move on to the Walther PPS Mod 1 with the flush fit magazine, or as close to as you can get on this series, that holds six rounds of nine millimeter. Next up, we have the MNP Shield. This gun holds seven rounds and, holy crap, it's bigger than the 365. Damn sick or some pretty awesome engineers pulled that off. All right, from here we've got the XDS 4.0. This is, again, in nine millimeter and it holds seven rounds. And now, to actually compare capacity-wise, here's a 365 against a VP9SK. Both guns hold 10 rounds in the magazine. As you'll notice, I kinda did some custom work on this VP9SK, which I'll probably end up doing on a 365 because this 365 is that awesome that I'm pretty much probably gonna replace that SK after a couple of weeks of having it complete. I know, I'm sad. <laughs> but that size comparison, how does it compare while shooting? So to compare this, what we did is we fired a full magazine out of every single one of these guns and a SIG P250. Now, we used the same lot of ammunition, we used 115 grain American Eagle, and we filmed it at 1500 frames per second. So we will time it and see how the recoil compares on each gun. And see if anything interesting comes out here. Now, for as far as how does this gun run? Well, to me, it runs and recoils like a much bigger gun. It really does not feel like such a small gun when you're shooting it. It really just is that awesome. Now, you may have heard the 365 has issues. Well, SIG did pause production for a short time to fix a few little things. This gun was produced before that. So we designed our testing procedure today to try and make it fail. So we started off using the gun exactly how it came out of the box. We didn't remove the factory lube like SIG suggests in the manual. We didn't do that. We just took it straight out of the box, loaded it up with some factory ammunition, and ran it. Because somebody who's not going to take the time to try and read the manual and do all this stuff, that's what they would see. Start off giving 115 grain American Eagle. We did four mags of each of these, so 40 rounds. This is where we had our first failure. Round 40 failed to feed into the chamber. In the slow-mo, I can see that the round kind of popped up a wee bit early. That may have been the cause of the issue, not sure. But we did have one problem there. From there, we moved on to Remington UMC, still 115 grain, 40 rounds of that, no issues. From there, we went on to 115 grain PMC ammunition, still no issues. From there, Winchester White Box, which I have had issues with before. SIG 365 ate that thing like it was nothing. Like, okay, so let's go with 115 grain. What if we give it 124? So we start off with Winchester White Box, 124 grain ammunition, all right? This is NATO spec. Ran it, no problem. We go to some Gecko, 124 grain ammunition, no problem. Went to some reloads I made. And this was a mix of ball and hollow point bullets. Just random mix in the magazine, ran it through, 
no problem. That got us with another 160 rounds. So we stopped after one mag, tore it down, got some pictures just to document what was going on inside the gun. Then we put another 150 through it, getting us up to 400 rounds. At this point, the gun was more or less broken. So we decided we're going to switch this over to carry ammunition to see how it works. First off, we give it two mags of what I had from a couple of different guns. Couldn't identify the lot anymore, so I'm not going to carry it. This is hurting critical duty, critical defense, and there were also some critical duty plus P in there most likely. So we load these into the gun, just random mix in the magazines, because we're trying to make this fail. Let's, can the gun handle it? But we decide, you know what, this gun's shooting so well, let's get some timing too. I'm glad I did. I start the timer off, go, dump an entire mag, and as it turns out, my splits were quite repeatedly 0.26. There were a couple of 0.28s in there as well, but average was 0.26. Very impressive for a gun of its size. That's more or less the timing I expect with a full-size VP9 for myself. <laughs> so I'm, I'm actually stunned at this point. But the gun ran, so we dropped through another mag. And of course, while I'm talking about this, you're still seeing all the slow-mo of what these guns, this gun looks like while firing. I should mention before we move on, the critical defense were 124 grain bullets. Critical duties were 135 grain bullets. And it just ate them all, no problem. We move on to 124 grain spear gold dots. Gun ran 20 rounds of that, no problem whatsoever. From there, we moved on to some Federal Hydroshocks at 135 grains. Gun ate that, no problem. And then we move on to 147 grain HSTs. Still, no issues. And of course, if any of you are tracking at home, that takes us up to 480 rounds downrange. So, we finish it off with another 10 rounds of reloads. And the gun just, it ate it all. It was fabulous. So we've taken it down, we've cleaned the gun at this point because it got through 500 rounds with one malfunction. Honestly, for me, that's pretty good. I've had other guns in carry that have not done quite as well in that test. That do have a good reputation still as well. The only point of concern I have with the gun at this point is there are some peening marks on the inside of the slide and on the front of the barrel. Well, front of the barrel hood. Now, SIG has confirmed that these are mere cosmetic issues. They actually were one of the things that got changed while they did the production halt. So I could send in the gun and get them to take care of it, do a couple of cuts, Fix it all up, but honestly, the gun's running for me, and I like it. And I honestly can prove I have one of the very early production guns of the 365, because the barrel cuts will be slightly different from here on out. And since it's pure cosmetic and the gun runs, I don't need to get it sent in to get the update done. So seriously, if you are considering a gun in this size, I would highly consider the P365. Is the price a bit higher than what you can possibly get a shield or something else for? Yes. But you also get higher capacity, you get night sights straight out the box. You get a lot of little things that are fabulous. And of course, $600 is the MSRP. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure there's a gun shop around. You can find it maybe under MSRP. If you like this kind of content, please help us out. Like the video. Maybe give it a comment if you have any questions, we'll be there to answer them for you. And of course, subscribe to our channel so you can always see the new stuff we have coming down the pipe. And if you want to go above and beyond to help us, you can always give us support over on Patreon. Thanks for watching.